these things here, bloody control panels, they used to terrify me. In this video, I'm gonna show you, if you're, if you're interested in control panels, you wanna know how they're built, I'm gonna talk you through the first six steps that I take when building control panels. Let's get into it. So first things first, guys, is um, center tapping all the centers um, of the fixing holes which we're gonna use. And then as you'll see here, I'm circling all of the fixing points which I'm going to drill. So we could have done this before doing the center tapping. Ultimately, we don't need to use every single fixing hole. It's just complete overkill. So as you can see, I'm skipping one or two. Um, having fixings each end of the trunking and then one in the middle, that's typically how I do it. And then here what you'll see is I'm pilot drilling all of those holes with a bit of cutting fluid and then yeah just a standard clean um, with methylated spirit just get all of that crap off so yeah now just a matter of getting all the trunking and din rail in place and then starting to think about fixing it to the back plate so as you can see you could use penny washers for the din rail as well i think it was just i didn't have enough um, to be consistent i think i would have ran out um, about halfway through this side here, so I'm just fixing using tech screws, which is good enough for me. Um, and then the actual trunking, I'm using penny washers. And I don't know if you can see it here, but I'm not tightening anything fully yet. I'm leaving it all a bit loose so they can move about. Also guys, um, very important this part, don't fix the outer bits of trunking because, and I forget this every time, but you can see these little black notches here and here. Here you go, yeah, so these black notches you'll see that I'm doing now, there's another angle. What they are is they are for these sections of the back plate and these sections of the back plate in each corner and halfway between each corner on the vertical and the horizontal, therefore fixing the back plate to the studs within the enclosure. So a stud will come through here and then we'll be putting a nut on the end of that. And we obviously don't want the finger trunking being in the way. So there's one of the middle cutouts. So I'll mark something like that. You see, yeah, enough to allow space around this fixing hole. And yeah, on the underside of that piece of trunking, it looks very similar. So yeah, going around just doing all of that. And then the best way that I found is not using a knife, not using cutters like this, because this trunking is very brittle and can crack in the wrong places. What I found is just use a hole saw. So yeah, as you can see, first piece of trunking, I've just cut out with a hole saw, this circular bit here, over the fixing hole. So what that looks like, looks something like this. So obviously drilling on the underside is something like that. Don't do it like this because I've done it like this before and it just cr ends up cracking bits of the trunking where it's so brittle. So yeah, a nice little cut out like that, clearing that stud hole. So yeah, now just fixing those final bits of trunking around the edge. And then at, by this point, everything's still loose. So you'll see just then that I tipped up the back plate. So yeah, it looks something like this guys. And then what I'll do is I'll put it on its side like that, move it about a bit. And what I'm trying to do is get all of the swarf and crap and metal and stuff out from underneath the trunking and the din rail. So I might do it on this side, I might do it on this edge and just try and free up all that crap underneath the trunking and din rail before fixing it for good. So I just did that then. And then as you can see, I'm going around with the drill with a torque setting enabled quite low and just going around and fixing everything for good. And now you can see just going through and just hoovering all of that swarf up. Also another thing to point out guys, and I found this quite a few times, is I would just visually inspect or run your finger, maybe not run your finger over because what I'm about to say, if you find or notice a bit of metal swarf sticking up that could potentially cut into the cable, make sure you obviously remove that. So you might have to loosen the tech screw pull it out with some pliers and then just tighten it up again. So yeah, quick vacuum, get all of that cleared out. 
And then the final bit is snapping all the finger trunking, which is really, really satisfying. So as you can see, the finger trunking where there needs to be a gap for cables to move in and out of different trunking ducts, they obviously need to be snapped. So there you go, snapping finger trunking. And as you can see here, I always leave one finger on the end of a piece of trunking like this, and it just helps hold the lid in place better. So there you go, some more photos, very satisfying. Uh, and here's what I mentioned earlier about a bit of burr underneath the tech screw. So just make sure you go around and visually check and remove any of those little burrs. Those will definitely cause issues when you come to test later on or even years down the line could potentially cause issues. So there we go guys, that's what it looks like when it's all finished, ready for the components. Little mistake that I've made and Typical, I do this kind of thing most of the time. So if you look at the drawing, we're actually meant to have a laptop socket or just a socket in general here, but I've made the DIN rail go across that whole section when it should have been cut off here. So that's something that I need to rework. There we go, so DIN rail should have sort of ended here. And it's exactly the same thing with the contactors and overloads and the transformer. As you can see, I've ran the DIN rail all the way along. So yeah, a couple of things that needed correcting there. So as you can see, this is what it looks like corrected. Very, very annoyed with myself because there's obviously these fixing holes, but as you'll see later on, I actually managed to cover those pretty well. So it's not too bad. If they were out in the open like that, I would be kicking myself and I'd consider starting again. That's how bad it bothers me. And here you can see a similar thing with the laptop socket. Again, luckily the laptop socket is actually covering this hole. So all good on this one.